that. I tried that again. I, I thought I was on the wrong page. <laughs> um, so, it's a bit of a spontaneous one, so I've not like got a lot written down for this. But, hoping some of you join me, because you may have voted for this in the Facebook group, I'm just keeping an eye on any comments on here, you did vote for uh, cooperative, uh, stationing for cooperative grooming. So I know many of you have dogs who are um, poodle mixes um, or, or more, for, more fairy dogs than a whippet, right? I've got a very excited whippet here. This is going to be fun. I hope you're tuning in because if you're not, you're going to miss out. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one because Arkle's wide awake and he knows we're doing stuff. So grooming can be challenging, particularly if you do have like a poodle mix with their, you know, or slightly uh, odd, sometimes odd coats because of the, of the mix. It can make grooming, calm down mate, challenging for, <laughs> I told you it's going to be fun, for you and your dog. Grooming is part of a day-to-day -day life for a lot of you with dogs with longer coats or, you know, furrier coats or however they are. We don't want it to be stressful because you don't, you can see his nose if you're wondering. It's just his nose there. We don't want grooming to be stressful because grooming is part of handling and handling is part of life. Handling is part of vet visits, handling is part of everyday life. People are going to touch your dogs, they're going to interact with your dogs, whether you want them to or not, probably a different matter. Um, but it's going to happen. So you need ways that you can groom your dog with ease. Sometimes what you find is that, you know, as you've had your dog, they have gotten into some bad habits with grooming or they simply don't enjoy it. And this can make it more problematic because again, for those of you with breeds who need, uh, who have a lot of coat management, this can make it a bit of a, you know, a, a challenging experience because you know your dog's gonna get a bit of a, a clip or a shave at the end of it if you don't get them brushed nicely. So we want brushing to be positive, we don't want it to be stressful. But sometimes habits have happened. Your dog sees the brush, they run away. You're, you're brushing your dog, they bite your hand. There are times when habits have already formed. And the problem with habits have already formed is it makes it very difficult for your dog to change their behaviors just based in classical conditioning. This is my opinion, this is my experience. I think dogs aren't stupid and sometimes the picture of you approaching them with a brush is very challenging to change in the long term. So my approach to this is a similar approach to one I take with uh, dogs who don't like harnesses or, or similar. And it's, I change up the, the visual picture and I give the dog a behavior to do so that they can do the behavior while I introduce the prospect of grooming. Now introduce, I'm going to show you this with Arklin a bit, which could be hilarious because he's absolutely hyper <laughs> after his walk in the rain um, when he's never done this. But what I mean by this is it could take time to build up this behavior. But this is good because essentially what we're going to do is for some of you, and some of you have done my classes, some of you haven't, for those who have done my classes, we're going to use the behavior of two feet on an object. And we're going to use that behavior to introduce the idea of a brush or a harness, whatever you want it to be, being put in that picture slowly and gradually. And by having the pause up object, by using that, you've got something where the picture is changed that you can easily train when you want to and then when real life happens you do real life <laughs> stop giving me a paw you don't even know that <laughs> you can't see um, i'm talking nonsense right um for example if i'm working with a dog who doesn't like the harness um and but they need to go for a walk every day and they're going to choke themselves otherwise we we just put the harness on day to day that's just going to have to be something that's temporarily non-negotiable but while we're doing you know, that every day, we're doing loads of training or what I'm about to show you so that eventually you can transition to this instead. So I'm gonna try my best to show you this with Arkle. Um, if you have any questions or comments, as always, type them in. Um, if your dog has any worries about grooming or handling, let me know. Um, or if you're wanting to use this for their harness or whatever it might be, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. But apparently this is like the most hyper I've had him. The rain makes him very hyper. Um, so I'm going to squish my camera a bit. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's have a look. So those of you that have done some classes with me should have an idea of how to do pause up. Give me some likes if you have an idea of what I'm talking about. 
hit that like button and I can see what you're doing. I can see it. It just means that we're all on the same page a little bit. You can sort of see with Arkle here that he quite understands the pause up game. He knows that when I put an object in front of him, thank you guys. <laughs> uh, I can see your likes. I can see loads of likes. Yay, you all know what I'm talking about to a degree at least. <laughs> Arkle knows this game. Arkle knows to put his paws up on an object. This should be something you have quite nailed. If your dog, just for those of you that don't know, doesn't know how to do this, I'm going to put an object down. I'm going to lure them onto the object. Yes. Yes. Oh, let's drop that one. Yes, and I'm going to keep treating them while they're on the object. And then before they get off, I'm going to say, okay, throw a treat away. Because you should get, like Arkle here, a dog who is pretty magnetized to getting on that object. And that's what I want. The object is already a place of positive association. So if you've not done that step first, don't jump to the other steps I'm going to talk about. Build the positive association around the object. You can see I'm barely having to do any treating of Arkle here. He just loves standing on an object that much. So what this means is I can start to change the picture of this a little because I've got Arkle in a controlled position. He knows what I want from him, which is just to be still. He has the option to, you know, opt out if he wants to, which he will be welcome to do. I will, <laughs> will precursor this with, I'm going to use a brush during this. Arkle likes to try and bite his brush. Um, so I'm probably working through some stuff that might be similar to some of you. But it's not going to be clean and it's not going to be super, super magical today, I feel. So I'm going to release him. What I'm going to do this time, as he's off, is I'm going to pick up his brush. Yes. And for him, this is just like a cheap zoom groom type thing. He's a whippy. He doesn't really need a lot of coat care. Yes. And all I've done is I'm holding it up. Yes. And the treats start. Yes. Yes. God, he got two there. I dropped one there. It's because I'm trying to look ahead and not look at my dog. Yes, so while the brush is present, yes, 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 yes. I'm not doing any pressure. Okay, and then I might put the brush away and we're gonna get less treats this time. So he's still get one for going up. He just nudged me and went, oh, there's, there's the treats. Um, but there's, there's less. I want him to differentiate a little bit here. This time the brush is out. I'm not even having to prompt him, yes. Yes. Oh, you didn't get that one. Yes. Yes. So what I'm doing, yes. I'm going to stop saying yes to him, but I want you to all assume I'm saying yes before treating him. Otherwise, I can't talk and make sense. Um, but what I'm teaching him is that the presence of the brush isn't always pressure on. And it isn't always going to be on him, but it's a good thing to see here. Okay. And I'm going to keep doing this throughout several sessions is what I would advise. I might, I'm going to have to, for the sake of this, fast forward this a few steps. But honestly, I would do this for a few sessions with your dog, especially if they're not keen on brushing. And it's the same. I'll show you with a harness in a minute. It's the same with a harness. But once we've done a few sessions of this, OK, then what we're going to start to do is do a little bit of moving it towards him. So this time he's on it and move it towards him. Yes. Now he has to not go for the brush or bite it. Yes. And I might change my hands because I would actually use my right hand when grooming. Yeah, that's my right hand. <laughs> yes. And as long as he's not biting it, he gets his yes and his treat. So this time it's a little bit more uh, operant. It's a little bit more I'm asking you to do something. And it's as simple as just not biting it. For some dogs, you're going to want to start like just moving it side to side. Yes, and treating, depending on your dog. I'm going to start to move it towards him. Yes, I'm doing some bad timing because I'm talking at the same time. Hang on, let's do this properly. Yes, treat. So as it happens, he gets his yes or his click whatever we're using, and then he gets his treat. Yes. And again, I would do this, I've dropped a treat, over quite a few sessions. Okay, I mean, the fact that I'm doing this now with him is mainly because he's a puppy, he's not that fussed. If you've got a dog who is genuinely, they're not impressed about being brushed, do not fast forward these steps, or it's just gonna go wrong and you're gonna have to start with something else. I really can't emphasize that enough. You must take this slowly, really slowly. Um, but in the long run, it's gonna be easier for you. Because then what you're going to start to do with your dogs, sorry mate, so you're distracted while you're teaching me mum. Um, what you're going to start to do is you're going to start to move the brush touching them. Yes. Treat. And again, for some of you, you might have a middle step where you're actually just moving it close to them. Yes. And treat. But for here, I'm just going to, you can see he gets a little bit agitated because he doesn't really like things on him as a dog. And he doesn't really like being distracted while he's working. So this is a little challenging for him. Yes. And you can see he almost, which I wasn't expecting, flinched a little bit. Yes, so I'm just going to do softer pressure. 
Yes. I'm trying not to use the food in his hand as a lure, but it's kind of acting as one. Yes. So I might move that treat out of the way. And I'm going to do this on, again, loads of steps. Okay. My dog's going to break his neck live on video. <sighs> These are the things that happen in life. Oh, well, that's never, <laughs> that's never happened before. Okay, so I'm not actually looking for that. It's very nice, and I'm probably going to do something with that later. Um, but I don't want four feet up there. Uh, we just want two. Yes. And I think he's offering stuff because he's getting a bit annoyed with me. So I would, again, do a few sessions of touching. Yes. Touching. Yes. And again, my timing's a bit off. Yes. The, time, the, the marker should be as the, the event is happening. So he knows that it's as it touches him that is getting him the food. Yes. And I've done it wrong again. It's because I'm trying to concentrate on <laughs> this as well. I'm usually better. I'm, so, I'm sure some of you might agree. Um, yes. Food. Yes. Food. Okay. Now I can see it that way. And again, you can start to see where this is going. And I'm going to show you it with the harness as well in a moment. But then I'm going to start to do it with a little bit of brushing. And you can see I'm not really having to tell him what to do here because he quite likes the game. So if I had a dog, if he particularly stopped coming to the box, it would tell me he's not comfortable with this. And that actually I need to go back a step. But he's happily still coming to the box. If he chose to walk away, it would mean I need to go back a few steps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to brush a bit. <laughs> I didn't get my yes in because I was talking. Yes. And then feed. Yes. And then feed. Yes, and then feed. I know some of you, this is going to be slightly different and you might have to have your hands on your dog, and in which case you're going to want to slightly tweak this um, and maybe not have the food quite so readily in your hand and have one hand on, one hand brush. Yes. Um, I just, I don't have to have two hands with them, with them. <laughs> like when I'm grooming them, if you see what I mean. So for those of you who are going to be playing around with like tighter curls and coats, then you're going to want to be adding in the idea of touching them as well, as well as holding a brush first before you start to do the brushing step, if that makes sense. He's found a treat that I've thrown under something at the minute. It's not that he doesn't want to come back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I might start to go. He's a bit He's a bit annoyed where his food is. This is a typical silly whippet thing. Yes, he says, where's my food? I'm working for food and I'm used to seeing it in your hands. That's all that's happening there. Yes, so I can use two hands. It's a little slower for my usual treating, which is why he's just moderately annoyed with me and he's walking away, but he's going to have to get used to that for this game. If he tells me at any point he's had enough, I'm going to have to say he's had enough because he's still only a baby. Can you see he walks away? I'm not going to put the pressure on. I don't think it's necessarily that he's anxious about being brushed. I think he's annoyed that he can't see the food in my hand. Yes. Well, that didn't go fabulously. But you can start to see, I hope, give me some likes if you can, where this should go. Because then you should start to have to do one, two. Yes, give me some likes if you know where I'm going with it, please. <laughs> I don't know. I can. This is the joy of lives. I can't quite tell how you're all getting it or not. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you for some likes. Um, so now I'm going to be eventually be able to brush, 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 treat, and increase the brushing and increase the handling and treat and release. But I think I'm putting a bit too much... Yeah, he's getting a bit confused, so I'm not going to over push this. I'm afraid I do have to value my own dog. <laughs> he says I'm not impressed with the speed we're going. And I'm not impressed with the fact I can't see the food, which is something we obviously need to work on. But if I were, if I were working on this, you know, it, it, this might take a few weeks. And it might take some time. Which I know is frustrating, but if I had a, a curlier coated dog who needed a regular grooming, I would just do their regular brushing, not on the platform which might take a bit of persuasion, it might take a bit of distraction, good boy. It might take a bit of, you know, all sorts of things. But the, the aim is gonna to be to transition to this method. Now this doesn't have to be um, on just like a, you know, an object that you're stood over them with. If it was easier, and it might be for Arkle, because I don't think he actually likes me standing yeah, over him too much. I said before, he's a sensitive dog. I might just have him four feet on the sofa, or four feet on, um, I might just start to get him used to a, to a completely different station. I know, where's your food gone? I might get him used to a completely different station and I might start to just get him used to the idea that he can put four feet if I pick him up on like the freezer in my house. I don't have a proper table anywhere or a table and I'm going to feed, feed, feed on the table, take off a bit like how I've built up this pause up behaviour. Because if you have a dog who struggles a bit physically, it might be a lot on them. Same technique for harness haters. Same technique. I love this game. It's like the best game I've ever played. It's so helpful. Up on the box. 
It's actually, a, yes, a bit more wary of the harness. Harness is here. Yes. Yes. God, I couldn't keep saying that word. Yes. Yes. Okay. Throw a treat away. Again, I would spend a few days doing that. I am pushing this through to try and give you an idea of what it will look like. Um, but that's only because he should be relatively confident. Yes. About his harness. Yes. And I'm moving it towards him and yes saying yes. I'm trying to. Yes. <laughs> And then it goes away, food, ah, treats gone under something, it's not good. Um, I keep throwing treats that my dog can't find. I can't be the only one that does that. Um, but then, yes, I'm going to start to build to, yes, off, yes, off, yes, off, yes. Okay, and then that might be one whole session a few times until I put it on, take it off. I think, I think you all get the idea of this. I think you've all, hi, <laughs> I think. Give us some likes again if you're getting the idea of this. Um, chucking things out of the way. Right, I'm gonna move his platform here. So the idea is you use your two paws up technique that you should have a vague idea on. Um, thank you for the likes. <laughs> uh, you should have a vague idea on. You're gonna probably build like a, you know, an area maybe that you do it that's away from their usual grooming place if they're having struggles with grooming. Are you a good boy? Yes. Um, and then what you're going to do is introduce the object for a few sessions, introduce movement of the object for a few sessions, introduce movement towards the dog for a few sessions, introduce adding handling of the objects and handling and brushing. And for some dogs that's going to take some time and you know I, I don't understand the frustration. I'm going to move them out of the way so I can actually see your comments in a second. Okay, um, I, I understand people's frustration that these things take time. But that is, hang on, I'll sit down, give me one moment. One moment, one moment. I'm just knocking my dog out, it's fine. Um, it's fine, I do these things to my dog. I'm absolutely used to it. Um, let's have a look, let's have a look. Um, uh, so, you know, these things take time. But the thing is, the joy about this is you can do what you usually do outside of this time. So if your dog needs brushing every day, you do your usual brushing, even if that's not the most straightforward way or they're not thoroughly enjoying it temporarily they're still going to need to be brushed a lot of your dogs i'm quite lucky they don't <laughs> not really <laughs> um it's one of the reasons i chose them i'm very lazy with grooming i love poodles but i absolutely am just lazy with a brush um it's the novelty is fun for other people's dogs but i couldn't spend it my time doing it with mine um but you you're going to do it every day but then you've got this other scenario that is eventually going to be the only scenario and they're going to be fine with it and there's not going to be any conflict there's not going to be any stress and there's not going to be any issues i love this technique because i think it just makes so much sense um i think it you know i was talking to a friend who's a groomer once um and i referred a dog to her for grooming and you know the owner was um having some struggles putting the dog's lead on because the dog didn't like leads on it didn't like restriction and i said you know how's the dog get on when it comes to you fine. <laughs> she sent me a photo of him, you know, in a little, you know what I mean, lead thing, t you know, on, on the table. And I was like, but you had no issues at all. None. And it's a change of context. The change of context is so key. He was happy on the table. He was enjoying it. He was enjoying it. You know, it's great positive groomer. He was having a good time, but the context had changed. The fact that he was on a table, whereas in real life he would be on the floor, just changed things enough. And I think that's changing that trigger picture and changing that scenario enough and i think that a lot of dogs you know those of you that are watching you do training with your dogs they enjoy training they like working for treats they understand that this is a game where they're going to have to work a little bit for the food they're going to have to be in a different mind frame and if they're thinking about what they're having to do you know they're concentrating on their movement on the box they're concentrating on the fact that they could earn a reward they tend to be less likely to go into bad habits because the bad habits of maybe snapping or growling or whatever the issue might be is from an emotional place. Whereas we're working them in an operant frame of mind. We're getting the brain working, we're getting them engaging it. We're not getting them in that fight or flight frame. So for most dogs, this should, if you take it steady, I'm gonna point my finger at you all, sorry. Um, uh, if you take it steady, it should work. Um, some of you have seen, I've done not exactly the same, but similar with Marley with a chin rest on a chair and clipping his nails. That does take a lot more time, but it's all about, I mean, um, you saw Susanna me wittering earlier about mini triggers. This is about all these mini triggers. 
Holding the item is a mini trigger. Moving it is a mini trigger. Moving it towards your dog is a mini trigger. Having, you all saw the change once I actually used two hands with Arkle. Having one hand, hi Arkle, having one hand, I've got food and he's very excited today. And one hand on him and another hand doing something was a, a mini trigger in itself, which I actually hadn't realized could be a thing for him, which we're gonna work on. Oh, we missed it. So it's just give me the food. He's doing pause up on me, so I'm counting it as a behavior, by the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Um, so it, it's all achievable. I mean, I can clip Marley's nails on, on the chin rest. It's a lot more of a lengthy process, but it's the same thing. I get him used to targeting with his chin. It's the safest option for us. Marley can't see what I'm doing. He knows what I'm doing, but he's not he's not close enough to have uh, protests, let's say. He's having to concentrate on keeping his chin down. And the way that I've built this up is diabolically slow. <laughs> I've had the nail clippers. I've given him like, so if your dog really, I mean really struggles with this scenario, go for the biggest value treats you got as well, whatever your scenario. Don't be, you know, I'm being stingy here. These are little treats. If I was genuinely working on like classical conditioning and improving a good association, I'm gonna use a bigger treat. Or, you know, I, I think some of you watching are a bit limited on their diet a handful of treats each time or, or their dry food if you see what I mean um because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be boring I want it to really mean good things and the key that I can stress is keeping things short and sweet I've gone off on my tangent from my chin target haven't I um but the chin target was the same he learned a chin target I, I can check Marley's ears in a chin target I can check his teeth um I can check I can lift his legs for a neurological exam um I can um I'm gonna come to that question otherwise I'm gonna lose my train of thought I was I started to have the nail clippers move the nail clippers towards him touch him with the nail clippers <sighs> pretend to clip near his feet pretend there was so much to it it's probably taken a lot of time but it's way less stressful uh, let's have a look so Joanne said, when you you, you are touching the object to the dog, could you put them on a lead or is it not as wise as Jasper will run off if I go near his feet and he, then he won't learn anything if he runs off. Um, what, what is the object he's struggling with, first of all? I just want to check that, if that's okay. Um, I probably wouldn't have him on the lead. Uh, what I would maybe think about doing is changing his emotional response to whatever the object is anyway. Um, I would start to keep it somewhere new because I tend to find that dogs know where the, the equipment they don't like is stored. Um, you know, the, I used to have the Marty's nail clippers in a drawer. And if you had the drawer, he'd be like, bye, see ya. So I had to start keeping them with his dry food. And then I would get them out just a split second before showing him his, his meal for the day and giving him the meal. I would start to get out the, so yeah, you know, if you have a dog who's that bad with the, with the object in question, then you want to start thinking about um, using classical conditioning Item means food. Let's just forget the station for a few weeks. Item means food. But you might find, and I could be wrong, but I've done this with um, with a few dogs, you might find that the station um, helps a little bit. So I think I think what I would suggest, because I've done this with a spaniel who, who was a bit similar, is have him at the room while you're setting up. Have the object either in a pocket or on a side somewhere. Um, you know, it's, what is it, um, with the, with the brush or clippers. Um, so I'd have the brush and clippers nearby, um, I would have him on the object, and I would just be, uh, have him on the pause up object, there's too many objects in my head, um, have him on the pause up object, go towards the item, and as long as he didn't shift off the box, reward. Not even picking it up the first few times. And then I would, um, you know, cause we're just breaking this down into four smaller mini triggers. Walk towards the eye, uh, the, let's say the brush just for the sake of my brain here. We'll walk towards the brush, don't pick up the brush, go back, yeah, yes, go back, treat. Towards the brush, don't pick up the brush, yes, treat. Go towards the brush, pick up the brush, put it straight back down, yes, go towards the dog, treat. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit lengthy, but um, it, it works. Um, I've seen it work with other dogs, not just my own. I think sometimes people think, well, you, you know, you're a trainer, it's easy for you. Definitely seen it with clients' dogs. Uh, like I said, the Spaniel didn't like, um, didn't like his harness, but I think we did the same thing. I mean, he would run off and hide and, and um, snap at the sight of his harness. Um, so I would break it down even further. I would try using the pause up technique and see how that goes, but I would always have the items, him out of the room, Items ready, bring him in the room so he's not seeing the items present or come out. So we don't have that, you know, experience with where they're coming from. I shouldn't be rewarding you for this. Um, and um, I'm going to regret it later, aren't I? Uh, and then towards item, yes, treat. Oh, it's because I keep saying yes. Uh, towards I walk towards item, yes, return, treat. And then 
pick up item, put it down, yes, treat, until you can pick up the item. Does that help, Joanne? Does that help? Or am I just <laughs> wittering nonsense with my dog eating food? Um, I love this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff is so of my favourite kind of stuff, in all honesty, because <laughs> it appeals to my ability to break things down into really tiny pieces. Um, Marley has taught me a lot about breaking things down into, like, like I said, the micro, micro, micro triggers, um, because Marley is very perceptive um, and very able to notice the smallest changes. John says, yes, that's very helpful. Okay, super, let me know how you get on. Um, I'll talk a bit more, because I think if any of you have any more questions, you're welcome to ask. I literally would love to run like some more courses on this at some point. I did an online one last year, and I think that went well. Um, it's a bit trickier in person, because they all get distracted by each other. Um, and it's not a good environment. Distracted, tense dogs are not the best environment. Um, but if there's enough interest, I can always run one of these online. I've got a course, I ran it last year, it's ready to roll. Um, but I know it's not for everyone. I find it exciting, honestly. I find it quite enjoyable, but I know it's not for everyone. But just give me a shout if any of you are interested. I've got hundreds of courses ready to go. I just never know why anyone's interested in. Um, so anyway, um, what we're doing is we're changing the trigger picture. Where we're changing the idea of the setup and we're rebuilding. And I, I would really, I think my key here is to keep things short, to keep things sweet. I would have that timer on. I'm always, I've always said, you can see on here, I'm going on far too long. I always overrun my training without a timer. Put a timer on, three minutes max, I would say, for my dogs. Uh, biggest value rewards, maybe do it three times a week. I probably wouldn't do it more than that, personally. Um, I think people have the um, unintentional habit of, and I'm really guilty of this, like, we're gonna work on this, this is what we're gonna work on, we're gonna do it every day, we're gonna keep doing it, and they're gonna get used to it. But the problem is that when we do that, and I'll catch that comment in a moment, um, when we do that, we make the training situation less exciting, less interesting, less joyful, because it happens every day. It is always happening, and that makes it, right? Sometimes I can see, uh, sometimes I, you know, my dogs, you, you can see, I'm still here trying to get involved in training. I, you, so you'll be surprised to know, I don't really train my dogs as much as you might think. I probably only train him once or twice a day aside from walks. I probably don't do a huge amount more. Um, and that's why he's gone from being about training to being like, I love it because he doesn't get it six or seven times a day. Um, and you know, I really would love to train him six or seven times a day, but I want him to have joy for training. And the way that I teach my dogs to have joy for training is by not overdoing it. Um, and some dogs, you know, you can do more than with others. I think that with my whippets, and I, you know, I've seen some of your whippets are <laughs> more energetic than mine that are watching. My whippets can get bored really easily. Um, and I've been at a point where I've done loads of training and they're not really very infused. And I want that. So if I'm training a classical conditioning thing, which this is, we're, we're changing their association, we're rebuilding, I'm not gonna do it every day. I think we sometimes need to stop looking at the short term and thinking about the long term. And I'm really, it's really hard for me to do because I'm a really impatient person. And I'm doing this a lot more with my dogs is that this month we are working on maybe four things mainly, like four projects. Maybe it's chin targets with Marley. Maybe it's paws up with Ollie. Whatever it might be. I'm not going to do it to death every day. I've got a few things to work on a week then of different things that aren't repetitive and aren't the same. If that makes sense. Give me some likes if that makes sense. I don't think I've explained that well at all. Um, keep it short, keep it sweet, don't overdo it. Don't do it even daily unless, unless it's imperative. But even then, I bring out the big guns. You know, when I've done uh, nail clipping and chin targets with Marley, he gets like half a cocktail sausage. Which is why we do under two minutes of training. Half a cocktail sausage, huge chunk of hot dog, half a slice of ham. We are, we are going big stuff. Which is why we have to do less. Um, it's a bit like some of you have done some of the courses where we're stacking the deck. Just a bit like that. So I honestly could talk this for hours, um, but I think <laughs> there's only three of you. You're probably getting bored of me by now. Um, and I've probably got a puppy who's now needs a nap because I think he's been helping me out for a few hours and he's really hyper from the rain. So Dad says, "Yes, please." Of course, uh, both Wally and Strip Struggle with different aspect elements. Sorry, of grooming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. I can certainly see if there's enough interest. I think I'm. I might be doing a confidence course. That might be the first thing I do. But I think 
over the summer months when it's hotter and dogs are not energetic I will get one on the case or spring summer something I did a whole course with um with Arthur and I had him we did the bucket game the bucket game is really good um but I think it can sometimes be trickier than it looks we did the bucket game we did chin rest we did pause up we did loads it was very exciting I got videos of Arthur in front of his bucket um with me pulling his gums checking his teeth checking his ears done no stress I don't think they should be stress handling dogs I know that there is when you start but I think there's easier there's easier ways to do this um yes yeah, so I better recap and let you all go <laughs> and maybe rest my voice as I'm a bit sleepy apparently <laughs> I think it's walking in the rain um so if it's something you know like brushing like harnesses I would go with um, the pause up technique on an object again you could use like a table for those of you with smaller dogs um, that are going to be at the effects on a table anyway that's not a problem but you're starting by making sure they know that behavior you're introducing the idea of the object for some of you that might just be moving towards the object and picking it up that's absolutely fine you can only ever go the pace the dog can go you start where they can start and you build from there um, so, you know, if I was picking something up, dog running off, even with paws up, we go back, we go back steps. Um, cause I just want, I want success. I don't want bad habits in there. Um, you build it up, you build the idea of the object presence, you build the idea of the object moving towards them. You build the idea of handling, like I was using two hands there with arc or where necessary. Then even when you get to the brushing, you're probably gonna brush a few times just to start with. But if you're doing it right, they should start to get the gist of it. Um, I will say if you've got a dog who struggles with nail clipping, um, I'm just like giving away advice now. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, I will try and get a video up later um, because Marley actually a lot of the time these days does his own nails. We have like a nail file board and I taught him to scratch it himself like a big board. Um, it's so much easier, I'm not gonna lie. It's so much <laughs> You can do the chin target and I like to persist with it for my own training. Um, but he finds that just scratching at his scratch board the easiest thing in the world. Um, so if you have a dog who likes to give paw or scratch at stuff, um, I'll try, I can't promise today, but I'll try and get a video at some point of Marley doing that, because it's so, it's so much easier to teach than you'd think. Right, I think I've talked enough. I think lots of you are bored of me and you want to go and enjoy your rainy days indoors. <laughs> I hope that's been helpful. Um, I hope your dogs are not too unimpressed by the weather. Um, if you have any questions, give me a shout. If you have any more questions, give me a message, shout, comment, whatever time you're watching this, that's fine. Um, but otherwise, I will let you all go. Enjoy the rest of your days. Um, and I will see you all again soon, I'm sure. I'm sure I've got more lives to do. I'm sure I'll see some of you in person again soon. I'm sure. Sure I'll be seeing some of you soon. Anyway, thank you for joining and uh, engaging as well with your likes because I can't see from a distance otherwise. But thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.